Right on. We are here with the Weekend Run Club. How did you guys come together? Oh, Mitchell, take it away. Mitchell, take it away, yeah. Um, <laughs> I met the person I started the band with, who is a former member. We met on Facebook, just jammed a little bit. Um, it was actually, it was my first time doing anything that was like contemporary or like commercial even. I was doing a lot of theater and classical stuff, which, um, gosh, it's been, it's been like almost four years since I met him. So the band, I would say, is closer to three years old, but we started writing um, some stuff just to see if we'd click. And then slowly over that year, we added Bridget and Joey and Ralph, who is our former bass player. Now we have Haley. And then just as things evolved over time, we, we started writing more together. Now we have Ryan uh, on guitars with Joey as well. So it's starting. So we're starting to like create our own lore, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. The superstition behind it all. Yeah, I um, when Mitchell kind of had some demos going for the band, I, I saw him post just like on a Facebook page, believe it or not. I'm on a, a Facebook group, so really we owe our whole existence to Mark Zuckerberg in a way. The Zuck. We all do. <laughs> yeah, dude. The, the Zuck. Zuck. <laughs> it was good. Just, Bridget, oh, you go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I just really liked what I heard. I was like, I feel like this just has a lot of promise. I was looking for a new band to drum in, and I was like, you know what? I, I have really no idea what to expect, but I want to jam, so I'm just going to put myself out there. And it ended up working out pretty well, I would say. And you yeah. know me from Facebook. Yeah, and I know Haley from Facebook. <laughs> Dude, that's so funny. I met Haley on Facebook too. It's just like one of those things where yeah, kind of I feel up. when you're not like in college anymore and you're not really in such a like a structured environment, you kind of have to get more creative as to how you meet, you know, local musicians and things like that. So work for us. Homies. And homies for life. Yeah. Good. Well, uh, how many albums do you have out at this point? I know I know <laughs> Zoo's the full length. Yeah, we got the full length zoo. We have an EP called OK for You. And is that it, everybody? Well, and we're our cooking. Secret album. It's coming. It's, no, we're working no, on it. No, we're cooking a single. We Oh, yeah, we, we cooked. We have cooked a single. Yeah, it's ready to go. It's fresh. Um, to be announced kind of a little bit later, but it will be part of a compilation album. Yeah, and a really we're really awesome happy about it. Yeah, it was our first single working with Ryan, our new member. Um, a little bit and we're going to work with them even more as time goes on but we're really just you know excited to start writing again in this kind of new arrangements and you know figure out how to evolve our sound so we're just really excited for everything that can come next of course hoping that you know the world gets safer and safer with vaccines and everything you know we're just kind of crossing our fingers and hoping for the best see is everybody vaccinated yeah yeah we are, yeah. None of my, we are. Totally, totally none of my business I'm. I'm not yet. I will be. I, I. I will be Thursday. But yes, I'm congratulations. congratulations. That's awesome. <laughs> yes. We but, are pro Oh, I'm. I'm really not. I'm weird. I'm not either way. I'm, I'm not a flat earther. I'm also not. I'm not an anti-vaxxer. I'm also. I'm just kind of lazy. I guess I just mm -hmm. haven't gone. <laughs> I'm a flat vaxxer. A flat. <laughs> a flat vaxxer. Yeah. No respect. Well, how do you? I get it. How, how do you describe the music you make? Ooh, that's a good like, one. Like a little bit <laughs> yeah. indie, a little bit dancey. Mm -hmm. I'd say a good time. Someone changed their Instagram to Power Pop. Whoever did that, I feel it's a good vibe. I like it. Yeah, that was that was me. I think I <laughs> as I started like kind of pitching us more again and really figuring out, you know, the shows that we want to open for, you know, kind of making our name out there. I I kind of want to have like a a good picture of what genre we are but it's kind of tricky with us because we kind of go a couple different ways so i kind of settled on like indie alt power poppers somewhere yeah. you know well also lines. how would we like describe our music that's like not just genre like how would you describe it to like i would think it's a good time you know it really comes it really yeah it live shows for us are really the chance that we kind of get to show you know the intricacies of, of each song and kind of really develop what we've we've put out before so the live set we definitely we definitely always like want to get people moving and just have a good time in general. Yeah, we want that energy and yeah. like I feel like we really try to get people participating and like involved and interactive just because I feel like when you can let go and really lose yourself to like a group uh 
group you setting. In the moment, you know yeah. the music, you know it. Basically, yeah. Eminem said it all. Haley <laughs> reiterated it for you. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Is there, do, do you have a particular creative process? Or does we all do different stuff. Um, kind of got messed up in the pandemic, but usually we would just like kind of start jamming if anybody had an idea and, and kind of see where that led. But throughout the pandemic, we've been more like trying to share files and that's been kind of unnatural and weird for us, but it's been yeah. interesting to test it in a new way. Mm -hmm. It's been cool to like let everyone kind of like settle into like how to come up with new ideas too. Cause like uh, a former member wrote really fast and like we would always just have something new to work on. Whereas now we're kind of, we each have like little things or ideas that we'll pitch that we'll kind of come up with on our own in time. And just like, we write a lot of scraps and shells of songs or like particular bit. I write a lot of like particular lyrics and then I just wait for someone to come around with stuff that kind of clicks with it and kind of like, puzzle piece it over time <laughs> yeah there's never i don't know that there's ever really been like a uniform or standard way that we do it i feel like and maybe that's just because it's a preference of mine but i feel like it can really start wherever you know from you know even a riff or maybe even just like an idea of of some words that mitchell really wants to use or something like that but um you know if we all can kind of get together over you know one idea and just just like figure out where should this go you know where mm. is this coming from that's always kind of fun to kind of figure out like if the song can write itself or not. Yeah. Like, the spontaneity is like, is key. Yeah. Hey, did what it, were you gonna say? I was going to say, where did it come from? Where did it go? Yeah. Cotton Eye <laughs> Joe. Exactly. Lots of good references here. It all know. started in sixth grade square dancing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> did it. <laughs> yeah. It all started back then. I believe that for you. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's an awakening. We're all have you played at this point. Oh man, where have we played? Um, no, I'm <laughs> just kidding. We've uh, we really like the venues in Chicago, the local venues. Um, yeah. you know, kind of the 300 cap and under stuff is where we like to play for obvious reasons. <laughs> we can sell those um, we'd boys like to play with help. <laughs> yeah, we love to play the really small venues for no other reason. Um, you know, United <laughs> Center, everything like that. <laughs> um, but outside of Chicago and, you know, the suburbs as well, where a lot of us are from, um, we've been to, you know, Indiana, we've been, where else guys, Pennsylvania, uh, Ohio, we've been, Ohio, we've been kind of out East and back for a little run, but this upcoming tour is going to be the longest one yet that we're yeah. super, super stoked for. Um, I'm so excited. Is, is it yeah, like a becoming, 30 days? Sorry, oh, yeah. go ahead. No, no, it's totally fine. It's a, uh, it's going to be, I think 10, 10 or 11 days total. Yeah. Um, love to go to 30 days at, at some point but unfortunately oh, we man. all do have, yeah. have jobs <laughs> the 30 days is yeah. like that would be like that's a sign that, that's that's like you're dude. doing it you're just doing yeah. it <laughs> i'm yeah, really excited but, to play nashville though on this upcoming yeah tour. nashville and cleveland or is it cleveland or columbus they were cleveland playing. Whatever the team, well, I don't know if it's announced but we're playing a show with a band we really 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 like that's nice really saved. cool <laughs> um so, yeah. Where did you get a get a show at in Cleveland? Um. Or you <laughs> well, I won't say the specific date or the people we're playing with, but it'll be at a place called Mahal's. Looks like um, bowling there. Very yeah, bowling oh, alleys there. Very me. stoked for see that. See me in the lanes. Come out. Yeah, to the we'll show. see you out in the lanes, man. See me in the lanes, man. <laughs> um. Yeah, super stoked for Louisville. We've gone to a lot of new cities we've never been to before, and I'm just excited to make a bunch of friends. Yeah. And just hang out, man. And just hang out, like get closer, like who knows? Like, I don't know. It's it's possibilities like, are endless. Truly. Yeah. Get yeah. to know like Ryan even better, which is really exciting. Mm -hmm. And ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> like who is Bridget? <laughs> <laughs> don't ask me that. I don't know. <laughs> Where did you find a play at in Nashville? I saw your post I, I don't know, it was a couple of days ago, I think. That yeah, that one I'm so close to closing in. I have a I have a second hold at a certain venue that I'm really hoping locks in, but I'm still kind of scoping the area in case that doesn't come through. So TBD. But everything Bridget, else is pretty much booked. Bridget does all the the tour booking and show management, and she crushes it. So yeah, she, oh, right. Bridget is teams. very multifaceted. Like plays like, like a multi twenty five instruments. 
uh, manages bands, manager manages okay. a record label. Okay. Great eyebrows. Great, um, eyebrows. Great eyebrows. Hat. Um, <laughs> just great, great at things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I do have a great cat. Thanks, everyone. That was nice. Yeah. You know, it's perfectly acceptable and legal to busk on, the, on Broadway on the street in Nashville. I do know Is that that, really? that will be our that will be our plan C. I think if we all should <laughs> we should busk, but not with like music. Like like we should just be do something completely random and unrelated. Stand comedy. Yeah, yeah. Stand -up comedy. I was thinking magic tricks. I mean, yeah, that's what okay. Nashville's built. Magic that's what comedy. Nashville's built around. You know, yeah. that's that's what Nashville's all about is busking. You know, yeah. it's not just my country music. It's that's that's how Nashville got built. So everybody down there busking. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think they, I think they fr I think they frown on electricity maybe, but I've seen people down there use electricity. I go I go down there quite a bit. Uh, Mitch right. has an acoustic voice. I was gonna say I have an electric <laughs> voice. I I like just power it on. Yeah. I just well, put I a capo that. on it and then I can sing. <laughs> yeah, but also like okay, wait, has anyone else like here busked? Because I actually would love to try that sometime. I actually would love to try that too. So I the closest I got to it was when when COVID started and there was a small window of time where it was they were doing outdoor seating and stuff at restaurants and it was summer and Joey, I was like, Joey, I've always wanted to like busk or do like some cover gigs just with like songs I like and we we did one and it went really well and then we just kind of like had other stuff going on but I've always thought how fun would it be to just like busk I know like there's another Chicago um band and the singer Kelly and Aunt Kelly is is the name I was mm -hmm. downtown one day like a few years ago and I was just walking across along with the Magnificent Mile and I just like ran into her busking and I was like, what are you doing here? And she just That's does so it all funny. the time. And I was like, that sounds so cool to just like She's grab your gear. Queen. She's just a queen in like every way. <laughs> yeah, Rob, uh, have, you, have you tried that before? Is that kind of common in Louisville as well? Well, busking? Yeah. Uh, it's not in the culture to nobody carries cash, I don't I think it's part of it. Yeah. You can go That's on the, true. the the big four bridge. People have been doing it on there, which is a walking bridge. It goes over the Ohio and uh, mm -hmm. the, the river. And that's cool. People have been people have been doing. It. I, I know some people that's done gone up there and done well. And that's that might be something you might consider if you get there early that day. I don't know where you're driving from to, into Louisville. Mm -hmm. We're coming straight from Chicago that day. That's like our first oh. date stop. But that sounds like oh. a, like a really pretty area. Regardless, have to yeah. check it out. Yeah, maybe we could at least walk like walk over it if we have time or something. Yeah, do, do it. Do a quick busk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm bringing... like if you, you ask me about anything that tourists do in Louisville, I I, I, I won't. No, I've never been to Derby. As as I've, lived, yeah. I've, never been, I've never been on the bell. I've never, I don't think I've done anything a tourist do, it's just, it does. It's just, I just live here. <laughs> like, right, for sure. Like a, the baseball bat factory. <laughs> no, I, I've not been to the, I, the, the bats museum. I've not... I've not been there. I've been to a bats game. I go to. I, I get free tickets all the time. That's pretty <laughs> oh, that's cool. Sick. How do you do that? Uh, well, one a, a guy in my older band, my, mm -hmm. you know, an old co a cover band I worked in for quite a few years. He's he's head of one of the security companies at the Yum Center, and so usually he'll get tickets to the he'll get the t tickets to the to the basketball games, he'll get he'll get good tickets for, to the bats games and all. And usually it's in a suite. <laughs> it's like, that's cool. Clubhouse. Those are yeah. Sweet. That's <laughs> awesome. Those, like random connections. And, and I always post, you know, th throw those pictures on Instagram. So oh yeah, I'm watching this from a suite, you know, just just to yeah. take, I'm looking I'm looking down at the poor people. And <laughs> yeah, you're just a poor person in disguise, but it's like yeah, yeah. I am. Yeah. Role playing for a day. No, that's awesome. I love like free tickets to anything makes it like so much better. I just can enjoy oh, yeah. it so much more knowing that I paid nothing to be here. <laughs> you're all from Chicago? Yeah, yeah, Chicago burbs. Yeah, we're all from the burbs. Although we the three of us live in Chicago now. Yeah. Do you do you root for the Cubs? 
I just went to a Cubs game the other night, but it got rained out. Did so. you root for them? Uh, for about 20 <laughs> minutes, and then, and then started pouring. <laughs> Um, I would say I grew up a Sox fan, but really my dad's from Texas, so we were kind of a Rangers house. Poser. <laughs> yeah, I, d- I don't know. Baseball's not really for me. I grew up as a Sox fan, but only because I had this friend that, like, I wanted to be him, and he was a Sox <laughs> fan. You ever had, like, those friendships when you were a kid? Like, like a person you just, like, oh, yeah. you were so envious of, like, their life and, like, everything they had. They and I just cool. like. Yeah, oh my god, don't even get me started on friends that have a pool. Dude, there, um, there definitely comes a point in like a Chicago kids like journey growing up where you like you have to pick a team. Yeah. And yeah. everyone like starts fighting about it. Even, even when you don't want to. Like yeah, you're like eight and you're like, I don't know. Like and you're in a conversation like? and you're like, oh, oh yeah, totally. Screw them, yeah. Cubs in fifth grade. Yeah. And you're like, right, exactly. Yeah. Oh, dude. And they're like, who's your favorite player? And you have to, like, find one really quick. It's like, uh, Yeah, dude, uh, that's why I was Kinerko? like, Paul, Exactly, Paul Konerko, the only White Sox player I can remember. Love him. Do you think he's still there? I have no idea. No, he's so old. <laughs> oh, okay. Too old dude, for this, baseball. What, what is, what it, when they ask you to pick a favorite player, just say, I don't know. I only watch live sports. <laughs> that's what yeah, I always yeah. like, I, I do. I never watch sports on TV, which is, isn't a, a dishonest statement. That's true. Yeah. Uh, but I'll go watch it live because it's fun yeah. live. And I, you know, of course, I like, that's a good answer. I like to drink. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> I would totally uh, go to not, most like, sports games. Why not? Yeah, that's like it, a 13 minute, 13 minutes from my place, the, like this uh, Slugger Field. And <laughs> you know, that's funny. They're close. And the beers yeah. aren't the thing at most stadiums, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, so like so it's called Slugger stuff. Field. It is the look. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nice. See, I forgot good. to say that in the beginning of episode. Episode I was like, oh, this is this is Weekend Run Club from Chicago. I usually say, I usually make sure to say where someone's from. That's Everybody right. knows. Yeah, everyone <laughs> who doesn't know us by this point, we're a household name. <laughs> You know, some friends of yours have been on this show. I, oh, I think really? they're friends of you. I think they're friends of yours. Um, a band called Cloud Houses. Yeah, we love Cloud Houses. They How were so fun. I was just doing this. <laughs> they're nice. Yeah, they're great. They, um, they actually they reached out to they reached out. I made a post in one of the maybe the DIY group. Mm-hmm. About st- what I was thinking of, what I was just thinking about starting this, and they was like, "Hey, if you if you do start us, can we be on your show?" I'm like, "Yeah, oh, yeah. Hey. Pretty much anyone that reaches out to Dude. me can be on the show." Basically, That's Marcus Zuckerberg for the win again. True. <laughs> yeah, the classes are really really nice, and they have great music. They do. They have really great music. I love Girlfriend. I, like, yes. <laughs> Like, like after after interviewing the whole next day at work all day long, I was walking around, and your girlfriend is yeah, pretty. dude, it gets stuck <laughs> in the head. <laughs> it was too. But, yeah, well, since it really is my fun. show, we're going to talk about my favorite song of your guys's, which is "All My Friends Are Dead." Is that correct? Did I say that right? Ooh, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, what's the story behind that song? That song has the craziest story. You picked a good one first. Yeah, that's a really good one. It started actually um, in a car ride on the way home from a show we played in Champaign Urbana with that was the elk walking. That was the show where those like someone brought their new like golden retriever. Do you remember that? Um, (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So on the way home from that, um, back when Chris was still in the band, he was showing me this demo. It was called like Sunset Riders at the time. And it was just like a demo that was lingering. And then he finally, he wrote some vocals for it. And we, I got, we had different vibes with it, but like just the message, it seemed very like, at least what he was trying to say was like, how do I make sense of the world? Like coming of age is weird. And like, what even is, does it mean to be an adult or more specifically, what does it mean to be a man? And it's like kind of uncomfy to navigate that sometimes. And then like that really resonated with me in terms of just like, thinking about like, well, yeah, I'm getting older and like, I'm, I'm an adult now, even though I don't feel like I am. And like, how do I find my place in the world in a way that's comfortable for me? So it, we kind of just got on this like vibe of like talking about toxic masculinity and just how to like, how frustrating it is when you want to move forward, but the world is like 20 steps behind you sometimes. Um, so it kind of became like, for me, at least it kind of became this kind of like, 
queer-esque out or anthem, I guess, just about like marching to your own beat and the people that can't like get on, can't can't jive with who you are, like screw them, just keep going yeah. and, and be yourself. And that will draw the, the real kinds of uh, healthy relationships that you really want. Mm -hmm. Well, you forgot that that one almost didn't make Zoo. Right. <laughs> it was it was like a totally different like, right. chord progression and like I think the melody is mostly the same. Yep. But Mitchell was really like attached to the like concept and we were just like I don't know if we're jiving with how it That's sounds right. instrumentally. So they like went and reworked it like two days. You're before right. We went into yeah. the studio and like rewrote the whole song and then we were like yeah I guess and. <laughs> Yeah, it just it kind of had a mind of its own and it, it ended up pretty cool. But you're right. There was a moment where I was like, I guess like it might just not be on. Mm -hmm. I do remember. Actually, I forget. But so it's, much. it's so funny how, you know, if you kind of rework some even like a little part of a song, you can yeah. find that it, like it just suddenly clicks with you. Now that's like one of my favorites to play live. It just like, I don't know. I just like found, I guess, where I wanted to sit in the song and then it all just kind of mm -hmm. came together. It was, it was like a minor key or something before, wasn't it? It was, mm. it was just it was like um, weird. a little bit of a like different progression. Yeah. I think that's like a good ode to like learning how to like just trust your bandmates and like learning to let go of something even when you feel really strongly about it. Mm. And like, I don't know, trying to see like for the greater good, sometimes you have to like just painfully like rip your dreams away. Okay. <laughs> That's, That's so true. Dramatic. Dramatic. No, you no, don't no, even no, remember no. it happened. Hear, hear me out. Hear me out. That's <laughs> not what actually happened. But that's like how it always feels. Like, you know, when you like sure. really attach to something, and maybe you don't have this problem. I like, I have a lot of issues. So if I like it really attached to something, <laughs> and someone's like, let's just change it and make it a little different. My initial reaction is like, oh my God, they hate me. I'm a bad person. They hate my work. They think I'm trash. And like over time, I'm learning to be like uh, a little bit more realistic with the world and mm -hmm. be like, oh, okay, you know what? It's just gonna, it's still gonna be a good song. We just gotta let, we wanna make sure everybody's happy with it. Because if everybody's happy with it, then it will be good for all of us. And then we can at least enjoy that at the very minimum. But I totally. think it, it's kind of been shown that when we are all happy with the music we're putting out, other people are happy with it too. Yeah, exactly. And you think, I think you can definitely tell, like, especially when, you know, that's a great example of a song that we all kind of wrote together. And I think you mm -hmm. can really see it pay off when we play it live because we all are really sure of what we're doing and we know that it works. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I love collaborating. I, I think if I write a song myself, it's going to suck. Yeah. <laughs> I feel that same thing. I, I feel that too, actually. It, it's like, it's harder because like, sometimes you get those songs where you're writing together and you wish you could have your way, but then sometimes you're writing by yourself and you just know that the people that you're not writing it with would probably make it so much better than you can already make it. And Dude. it's so easy to second guess your own ideas when everything is on you. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I was going to say. I love it. And I hate it like working in a team because you got to like trust your team members to the ultimate core, but yep. It's good. It's yeah, I mean, it can. It's so funny how someone else can hear something just completely different, and then the way that they take that direction is just like it will. So many times, like it's something that Mitchell will add, or really anybody in this band, Haley, um, they'll just go in a completely different direction. I'm like, that works so well. I yeah, never, oh. ever, ever, ever would have thought of that. With the, like, um, like, I am so grateful to be in this band. Like, it's just me, so rewarding. Me too. With a, We have a new track that will be coming out, like we mentioned earlier. And that one was, for so long, I just, I hated it because I couldn't do anything with it. And Joey had this thing and he liked it and we revisited it. We kind of changed the key a little bit. And then, like, I still was second guessing. And then Bridget wrote, like, a completely different version with, like, different lyrics and melodies. And I was like, whoa, I never would have seen it going that direction and then it turns out that like we we like put her version of of the the vocals and like message and we mixed it with mine and it like i would not have it any other way now yeah man that's that's what it's all about in my opinion i was just like hey take the parts of this that you like and forget the ones that don't like i want to know what you what you see in this and yeah we'll i loved it i loved it dude it was it's good i'm excited hell for yeah it. <laughs> So what is there a, a 
particular song that's very personal to you guys? Hmm. You guys go because they're like, all personal to me. Yeah, there's just like different favorites. I think, um, I don't know, like Casually Dancing and Tired really stand out to me as like some of my favorites to play live. Um, mm -hmm. I really like going from Sometimes into Let's Think Back. I think that that was a really fun thing we started doing live that we kind of incorporated into the album. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, Mitchell yeah. writes most of the lyrics, but you know we are pretty similar people, and so a lot of the times the things that he writes about really strike a chord with me. Um, you know, we have a song called 101, which is about like the therapy experience, which I don't see really a lot in you know mainstream music or anything like that. So that one always hits home for me, um, having gone through the same thing myself. And yeah, anything in regards to you know stuff that we're going through, it can it can be different problems, but you know so often the feeling is still the same. Um, so yeah, that's how I kind of connect to our music too. So uh, you see, if you see me writing these down, I'm probably with your all's permission, I'll probably add them into the audio episodes. Yeah, yeah totally. add, add whatever you I'm, want. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you don't, you know, I'm not going to get in trouble with the record company, which you are the record company, I guess. We yeah. are. So you're good. <laughs> <laughs> and throw in the Macarena here. Yes. <laughs> so, Take take a hike records. I believe with what I came across in my my limited research, <laughs> I did get some yeah. in. Yes, you sir. Got that right. That was something that me and Bridget started um, in the pandemic, just because we've been like trying to figure out how to sell merch online for our own stuff. And there's like a lot of like weird loopholes if you want to do it legally. Like you have to like do taxes and stuff, and you have to like <laughs> set up an LLC. And it just was like yeah. increasingly frustrating. And we thought like if we set it up as a label, we could do this for a bunch of people through us. So nobody else has to like figure out how to do this. And we could just pay people out as like independent contractors basically. So yeah, it, was, man. it was like a big mind puzzle and it took some time to figure out, but it was a good project for quarantine and I'm glad we did it. So yeah, there's already enough you kind of have to be thinking about and concentrating on as a band. And it's like, you know, especially with our friends in the area, like we would love to just, Hey, just put our merch on, put your merch on our site and we'll help you get it out there. Cause like, gosh, there's so much still confusing things. We're just kind of struggling through as it comes up, but we're learning day by day and we have a pretty good handle on it now. So yeah, it's been fun. No regrets. Cool, man. No regrets. <laughs> what is your favorite show you played? Mm, chop Shop. <laughs> we played a, a gig at a place called Chop Shop and it has like a butcher shop in the front. And in the back, it's this big stage. And we play there twice now. And it's, I think, both times been very, very awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's always cool when you can go to a venue that does lights for you. I feel like as a local band, that's super rare. And so when it does, it's just like you feel like you're playing the biggest arena in the world. Yeah. It's like, oh, we have a light show, <laughs> you know? Um, but we've played a couple sold out. The times that we sold out shows were just such a thrill. We played a, a sold out show at Beat Kitchen, mm -hmm. um, which is a local venue in Chicago. It's like 300 cap or so and that was just so magical um at the end of the set we actually all switched instruments for our last song and just stuff like that yeah, keeps, it, right. keeps things so interesting and fun for i feel both us and the audience so that would be mine yeah i i do i will say that chop chop show was magical the beat kitchen one was cool because we had this big like it was a, a release show so we like had a lot of interactive stuff um with the other bands and we actually took time to get to know them and like we met up and did promo stuff and like we had um like all the vocalists got together and did a collab in the, like in the audience acoustically which was really yeah. fun and i just That's feel right. like there was so much happening we really like honed in on like let's make this an experience for everybody instead of like all right your fans come for your show then they leave and our fans come for our show and then they leave so that that was like a very magical night but i would say that in chop shop and then also we we played a really fun house show in michigan in kalamazoo on um, one of our tours that was like uh in someone's basement and it was just packed and it just i felt the love it was very intimate yeah. and just the energy was very wholesome oh, and positive i got, I got the, another one i gotta bring up the one in south bend i, I thought of that one too yeah because uh we played in south bend and we got to open for um flint eastwood who i think now they go by jacks but Mm -hmm. that was yeah they, like, set us up in a hotel they like that gave was us true 
free food and drinks. And That's my favorite played. and least favorite show we ever played because I blew my voice out and something. It was my first time playing. Oh, outside. a lot went wrong. A I, like, lot went wrong. All of my but, fiddles. But it was still the best day because we we went white water rafting and like we <laughs> yeah. just made a whole we, day like, out did of it. Events and then we like partied at this hotel they got for us. It just like felt like we were doing the real thing. It was yeah. really living weird. the big time, baby. Yeah. Well, here's the counter question, probably my favorite. What show did which which is your least favorite show? Ooh, I gotta think about that. I'll go first because yeah. I actually recently answered <laughs> oh, the question. He's got so, an answer. It's that one I just said because it was really I, I was so happy to be there and it felt so official and so like professional and I just I felt so I went I went I went to my hotel and cried afterwards. It was rough. But um <laughs> Uh, just cause I, and, it, and then it was all okay and it was still a great day, but like, I, I felt <laughs> embarrassed because something went wrong. I was tired or something I had eaten wasn't settling with, um, uh, sitting with me. Right. And I just felt embarrassed that like I didn't do what I thought was my best. But then the other show is when we played, I think it was Moe's Tavern. Um, this person I was like crushing on a lot said that they were going to come to the show. And then they just ghosted and never showed up. And I spent like the whole set like Thinking waiting for them, waiting for them to walk in and hoping oh. that they would walk in. And it was just like a very non-centered, disappointing. That evening. place is funny because it's like a, a Simpsons themed bar, but they don't have the licensing. Yeah. So yeah. like everything's a little bit weird. It's like bootleg. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, they have like a like a, a off-brand Simpsons family painted on the wall. Like they're just a little bit different. <laughs> it's not I, most, yeah, it's not called most tavern. So like, who's who are we kidding here? Yeah. Um, my answer would have to be I won't I won't name the venue. It's not important. But we I set up a show in Milwaukee one time, and um, the communication with the promoter at the venue was was pretty normal. Um, so I figured you know I would have someone to you know, just like connect with on the day of the show, right? When we come in, like, where do we set up, et cetera, et cetera. We get to the venue and nobody that I contacted is even there. There's like a bartender or two. I tried like asking, hey, like, is there, you know, who do I talk to here, right? Um, and they're just like, oh yeah, I don't think they're here today. Go on and, and I guess you could just, you know, go to the back room. So we had to like figure out the sound system and set up everything ourselves, which I was just not expecting at all. Like we literally... Like, I, th I was like, should I take money at the door? Because, like, no one is working the show. So that was quite a, a trip from beginning to end. But we pulled it off and people came. I mean, it's not like no one came. So I always consider that a win. <laughs> um, but it was very, it's interesting when you have a DIY show in a, in a venue because it's like, sh there should be someone here, right? Yeah. yeah. Sometimes there's not. <laughs> Highlights for of that show was there was a dog, a guy walking around offering people raw hot dogs. Um, right. and we got some great Snapchats out of it. It's true. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, go ahead, Haley. I was gonna say, um, we played this house show that was just like the show itself wasn't that bad, but the venue was just like a dark hole of a basement with no <laughs> lights, and it was like so musty smelling. And like, you had to watch out for pipes, like, you're gonna hit your head on a pipe, and it just, it, I don't know. I was like, that's the most I ever was like, oh, we're gonna get murdered. Playing. Was that can't, win one? Them, can't win them all, folks. The one by the one... village. Yeah. Okay. The show itself was great. I had fun. Yeah. It was. Just, it was weird. Yeah. There, <laughs> the the fans that came for one of the bands were like really rowdy too, and like put a hole in the wall somewhere. <laughs> it was not good for like the people that own, own the DIY show were like, we're never doing this again. This is a horrible <laughs> idea. Yeah. And then cue us bowing. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. We didn't do we it. Live to serve. We didn't. We did it by proxy. <laughs> but yeah, that man, that'd be <laughs> yeah, somebody knocked a hole in the wall. <laughs> I know we've had some weird times. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, elaborate. That's what this show's about. <laughs> weird times. <laughs> weird times. <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, we for our first EP release, we I had set it up with. Oh my yeah. Cat here, hello. Let's go. <laughs> oh, my cat. Famous. Here. Dude, it was the first EP release and my first show with the band. Yeah. Awesome. Great start. The thing about, I feel like it just, you know, time is really half the battle when it comes to bands because, like, you just have to, like, start playing places to know what they are or else you're never going to mm -hmm. know, like, what the good venues are, what the bad ones are. 
so that's how I rationalize uh, my day to day. Um, but <laughs> no, we had booked a show um, uh, a while away. It was in the suburbs because we at the time were all living there and it was our EP release show. So obviously it was a really big deal. We were all hyped for it. Um, and again, I had, you know, been in contact with somebody. It seemed like everything was going well. You know, I always reach back out to confirm, make sure there's no, you know, do as much as possible to make sure that you're not blindsided by anything that could come. Right. So we pull up to the venue, the lights are dark, the doors are locked, bad sign. Um, we pull up, you know, kind of investigate what's going on. It seems like it's just completely dead, shuttered. Um, I try contacting the person that I've been in touch with. He says, oh, no, that's weird. Like I had told the owner, you know, blah, 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 blah. Apparently he tried calling the owner. The owner didn't pick up. I tried calling directly. No answer. We weren't able to get in touch with the owner at all. It just turns out he had forgotten. So, <laughs> so, so the owner we were had in the forgotten. Lot with like the other band that showed up and we like went to a burrito place and tried to like last minute figure out what we're going to do. <laughs> we had like a half hour to spare. I'm just going through every contact in my phone and thinking about anyone who could have any sort of connection to a space. I get to somebody um, named John who runs a venue in my hometown, which is at that point like 45 minutes away, but better something <laughs> than nothing, right? You'd rather have a show yeah. than not a show, right? So we, I call him up. He says, you know, I'd happy, I'm happy to have you. Just come on down. I'll figure out a door person for you. So we all jet down the highway at like 80 miles an hour, texting everyone that we know. They were like calling coming. everybody. Change your plans. Change yeah. your plans. Change your plans. I'm like driving with one hand, like trying to post on our social media of like, the show's moved, the show's moved. Because it's like doors open in half an hour. Like we're barely even getting there on time. We ended up making it. I don't think anyone went to the wrong location. I hope to God. Um. And the so. show, the show a was a blast. Of I mean, did, but, but like they already knew, like they didn't like miss the show. Like they got it. Mm -hmm. a few people that were like, "I'm almost there." I'm like, "Oh, not anymore." <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah you got to turn around. Yeah, some people did have to turn around, but you know, for what it was, we pulled it off. We had a great night. A lot of people. It came. was pretty full. It was yeah. a good turnout. Everybody got to play. It was. And it, the only thing I could ask for was that people could still come because I mean that was just such a, a quick left turn. But mm -hmm. you know, we made it out alive. <laughs> So, as far as Chicago bands, who do you like to share a stage with? Mm. And this, this is when I'm poaching. I'm poaching other bands to contact to be on the show. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Do Absolutely, dude. I yeah. Think one of my favorites is uh, we toured with this band, Team and Aid from Ohio. And yeah. we, did, we did like a couple days run in a row with them. And it just, just to, like get to know them better and see their show every night was really fun. Mm -hmm. um, what was it called? Team and Aid. The yeah, show. they are from Ohio, um, but yeah. they are yeah. amazing. Still highly recommend them. As far as Chicago goes, we've shared the stage with so many cool people. Um, man, who comes to mind? Uh, Aunt Kelly, that we mentioned Aunt earlier. Aunt yeah, Kelly, I love them. August Super Hotel. Kick. Um, Super Kick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're in St. Louis uh, now, but they are from here. August Hotel. And, and Violet Crown. Splits. Mm -hmm. Oh, Sunday Cruise. Love Sunday yeah, Cruise. Good. Oh my gosh, they're popping off. They're yes, popping off up lately they are mm -hmm. huge now um we got a show coming up with a band called guardrail they're really good they describe cool. themselves as, as diet punk which is funny. calico loco oh yeah, we're com up. yeah we have that coming up they're really they're, cool they're cool mm -hmm. we'd love to play with friday pilots club someday it's like my yeah, goal dude. they're awesome yeah. yeah so that's just a handful but there's so there's so much talent here it's just insane yeah who, who would you like to collaborate with Ooh. other than yourselves of course i love this question because like collabing is is so is so cool and it's like i actually i'm i collabed with hornbill out in utah mm -hmm. i'm guest i did guest vocals which are like um not what i would usually sing they're like hard punk vocals which i got to like explore that and that's on one of their songs on their upcoming album that'll be out this year next year i think mm -hmm. um as I a band pretty much like okay. if anybody reached out i think that that would be cool yeah yeah just to like challenge how you look at a song i don't know we've done a few like cover collabs with um eva from Honest hotel which was really mm -hmm. fun with jeff from, jeff Violet from Violet crime, crime mm -hmm. with um kylie from mild west mm -hmm. right that's right yeah that's another good local band is the mild west they are yeah. also popping off yeah, yeah. If, there's a few vocalists that if they like ever for some reason like just reached out and were like, "Yo, can I be on this?" I'd be like, "Yes, please, please, please." Yeah, 
So yeah, and like, spe- speaking of um Friday Pilots Club, it's funny because we actually did get um one of their members to mix our upcoming song, which was yeah, like so yeah, that is kind of a collab. We couldn't believe how easy it was to kind of get a hold of him and, and be like, Are you interested? And he was like, Absolutely. We were like, Oh, cool. You know, it was, it was very easy. And then um a member of the band Capital Soiree mastered mm-hmm. that track as well. So they're good too. You never know who like is actually in reach that you might think is out of yeah. reach. You know, a lot of people are in, still in the same boat you're in, even if, even if they might have like a bunch more people coming to their shows. You know, I think everyone more or less starts in the same place and everyone remembers, you know, the road they took to get there. So, yeah, and yeah it's, it's cool, been like, really cool. Money. Reaching out, learning, like I'm trying to, I like try to be careful because I can come across like overly friendly at times, but like, um, <laughs> so like all, sometimes all it takes is just like reaching out in a band that's like, you know, your size or just like kind of similar vibes. All you gotta do is be like, hey, I love your stuff. If you ever wanna like do something, yeah, let's do it. That's kind of how the cover projects worked. We j- I just wanted to try and foster some relationships and get to know some of the, the other artists because we spend so much time together and then you go to the shows and it's fun, but like if you, you don't always have time to bond with the other, other bands or like get to know them and mm-hmm. it can be kind of awkward, so like, but in yeah. time you you meet we we went to that uh the splits and the um why am I blanking on uh, on their name? Pink squeeze. Pink squeeze, yeah. Love when we them. Saw them. We saw like I saw at least five people from five different bands that we all have crossed paths with at some point or that we will be in the future. And I thought oh. that was really cool. Just to kind of like it's like my peers and my friends, they're also my yeah. music. Music friends. Yeah, dude. It's <laughs> yeah. a very supportive community. Um, and I think especially during quarantine, that was really the perfect time to just hit some people up because we were so bored. <laughs> we couldn't we couldn't get together and, and practice and write as usual. Um, and I think that we didn't waste that time either. We we like got closer with everybody. We, you know, wrote with people, we did covers with people. We tried our best to just have stuff going despite the world being so locked down. Um, and yeah, it's just a really cool little community that we found ourselves in here. I feel really fortunate. Yeah. All right. Uh, here's a fun question. Mm-hmm. What was the the first album you bought with your or CD or whatever you bought with your own money that you listened to and threw it out the window immediately? Oh, <laughs> I have one. I have one. I have one. Okay. <laughs> this is so. Um, do y'all have a store called Disc Replay? Where you're from, Rob? <laughs> I think so. I don't know if there's one here, but I know about disc replay. I, okay. Other places I've lived. So I went to a disc replay with my friend Steven when he was home from college. And we saw this, like, it was like Green Day lullabies. And we thought it was like the entire album, like, sung as like lullabies. We thought it was a cover album. So we, like, we bought it so quick. And it was just a freaking glockenspiel the entire time of just oh the melody God. of the the vocals i know what you're so talking like, about <laughs> how dare you know what i'm talking about that sounds kind of sick actually so it's just it's like very it's, nice it's just like <laughs> melodies on the on a glockenspiel of like green day and we were so disappointed was it put out we, by green day no, 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 no it's no, just no, like it's some random person lullabies. Just playing it on a keyboard i don't know why you would get that i think that's the only time i've ever like bought something and then got rid of it go ahead <laughs> i got one um by this band called man man because i liked uh one of their songs so i just went and bought the record when i saw it out of the fye or something and it was just like pirate shanties and like oh. just not I, it's just like it was a really weird like conceptual pirate type album and i just was you don't really get it, thrown off by it. you don't You're get it maybe ready. i just was like oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I think i still have it i just like, i don't <laughs> listen to it because why would i need this you're not ready for man man dude no i'm not <laughs> um i can't i don't know if i ever threw anything out the window once i had money but before i had money i would get cds at the library and i liked most of what i found um when i was that age i was in middle school high school trying to figure out what's the extent of like what i like and what i don't like right there's so many genres at that point you've never even heard and so i had a lot of friends that were into kind of a little bit harder music with a little bit more screams and i had i had a couple bands that i really liked with screams um 
some of my friends were even, you know, more hardcore than that. So I tried out a CD from the library from a band called Asking Alexandria. Oh, and that's how I knew my limit. I was like, I don't like this. <laughs> he just sounds really mad. Um, you don't have enough testosterone rage. I guess not. That was my limit. I was like, I don't think I can do this much, this much mad. You know, I'm just not that yeah. mad. So that would have to be mine. Oh, I think you're muted. <gasps> yes, you are. Oh. You're muted. Oh, I was. I was, yeah, every time I hit the vape. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Is there a particular particular producer you would love to work with? Mm. Ace I love this question. Of, Ace Enders has done a lot of cool stuff um for both a band I like called The Wonder Years and a band I like called Aaron West and the Roaring Twenties. And it's just that kind of one of those household names that you don't realize has been behind so many amazing records. Um there are a lot more people than that, but I I always kind of forget the names until I look it up again. But like a lot of the modern albums that I've listened to like have usually been done at like one or two of the same studios. Electrical audio. Um, here in downtown Chicago is one that sticks out. I have a band that I like called Hippocampus that recorded there one time. Um, our friends Beach Bunny also recorded there. And so I think there are a couple of different producers there, but they they all do such an amazing job. Like everything I've heard out of there is great. So I would say anyone from Electrical Audio, audio for me. Yeah, maybe and I'll, enough cash. And yeah. I'll interject. Beach Bunny, if you're watching, if you see this video, I have reached out to you and <laughs> I really like to have you on it. Bunny. They're on top of the uh, world. Yeah. Yeah, I have reached good. out to them. I'm hoping I'm hoping to hear back from them. <laughs> a band called Terra Terra. I'm trying to lock yeah, in a date with we them. Love with them. them. <laughs> I actually know one of the one of my friends is dating someone who's in that band, and I found that out after we played the show with them. Oh, they're um, cool. Yeah. I would say uh, John Feldman. Just is it's such a stretch, but like he's done so much. So much cool stuff with the used. Um, oh yes, and Legendary. whoever who, whoever produced Pierce the Veil's first like two <laughs> albums, I, the production on that. Go listen. Okay, it's so good. It's just it's the production. I is so good. don't need to go listen. I know those. Bridget albums. is oh, burnt into Bridget's brain. It is burned into my brain. And if I'm going to take substances, you're, you're that is limits. my choice of listening. This is past my limits. Um, <laughs> so funny, Haley. Did you say one yet? I don't know. I think for me, that's kind of something that, like, when we get to that stage, is Same. something I look more into because it's like, uh, who can we reasonably afford? Who would be a dream? Like, what fits our sound best? And honestly, um, working with Drew from Friday Pilots was pretty cool because that's been yeah. something we've been trying to nail down for a while. I was gonna say that um, anyone that sorry, I go finish. I'm talking. No, to I was just gonna say anyone that that knows a lot about like vocal engineering. I'm really curious about mostly not necessarily just for like effects and stuff but like i want to learn like what are the frequencies in my voice that make me shine and i'm as i like <laughs> as i like dive more into it like alone and, and i, I learn a little bit about mixing it's like i want to know like how do i make how can i make myself sound the best and also how can i make it fit our sound in a way that like kind of defines whatever genre we're in you know like sometimes it's just so polished that I, I, do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? I don't know. Yeah, like 420 kilohertz. <laughs> got him. Hell you got, yeah. You got me. Audio humor. Uh, Let's see. Lost my place. Uh, damn it. What's the best musical advice you've ever been getting? You've been given, getting, been given. <laughs> yeah, currently getting. Let me think for a second. That's a good question. I actually, I think this actually is a really good one. And it's like the bands that are successful are the bands that just never break up. Like if you just keep going with it, eventually, like you're going to get some mild level of success. True. Yep. I think, I like it, that. yeah, it's just like longevity and like sticking to something if you really believe in it. I would say a professor I had told me not to worry about finishing college back when I was still in school for music and I didn't finish college and that like was a huge mental roadblock for me um feeling like I couldn't I'd never like amount to anything unless I had like this like one rite of passage I guess 
and getting like the permission to just like forge my own path was really empowering. Mm, I like that a lot. I, yeah. I can't remember exactly where I read this, but at some point, you know, in my quest to understand anything about this industry, I came across some piece of advi advice that just really hit home. And it was just like, you get for, for this profession, you get exactly what you put into it. And like, I think a lot of people when they release music kind of expect it to just go somewhere, but there is like so much music uploaded to the internet every day. Uh -huh. I mean, it's amazing and also terrible if you also want to do that and stick out because you have to take it upon yourself to send it to as many people as you can find that give a fuck, which is rare because obviously there's just so much coming at you all the time, like in general, but also with new music, it's like, you know, taking the time to listen to something um, I feel like because of that, that just like means so much more to me now more than it ever has. Mm -hmm. I like realize that there's just, it's just so it's so oversaturated. And so when I find out that someone actually took the time aside to listen to, you know, our songs, I know it's just three minutes. But like the fact that you did that means a lot to me. So just as far as, you know, putting into it, I think I have just kind of I don't know, put it upon myself to really pour myself into it i figured like yeah i'm choosing this really unconventional route if i'm gonna do that i'm gonna do it 110 percent um you know that way when, whenever i look back whatever happens i know that i i did absolutely everything i could you know no regrets like before so girl boss girl bosses yep you got anything you want to add before we wrap this up starting to run out of time here hmm Look for our tour announcements. It's coming very soon. Mm -hmm. October, hint, hint, hint. We will obviously be playing with Rob and Louisville. Very excited for that one. Yes. Um, you look out for that single. It'll be coming uh, sometime in the future. Who knows when? So true. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, follow us on our socials if you want to hear more from our stupid faces. We're at We Can Run Club on pretty much everything. Um, you know, hit us up. You know, say what's good. Follow us. Be our friend. <laughs> Right on, guys. Thank you all very much for donating your time to me, man. I, I hope you had a good time. I did. I, I, I'm pretty yeah. sure I'm, I'm pretty I sure I've tailored this, I've tailored this environment on this show to where it's really fun. I'm pretty I'm pretty sure I've all, almost got it down. Yeah, <laughs> um, dude. This what, was a blast, man. What, Thank you so much. When, when, should I, when should I publish it, you think? A couple of weeks before the show? Sure. I, I, was, I was thinking about three weeks before yeah 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 that works great you know good promotion and it'll give yeah, me time that. give me time to time to edit it and not have to rush editing on the flock i have to sometimes so some of the bands go on here yeah we're leaving for tour tomorrow crap oh no <laughs> no no <laughs> no i mean you know i try to plan things as much as possible so yeah take your time in all right um since so technically the show's over but there's two things I'm going to two favors I'm going to ask. Yep. One is that you make me a sound you make me a sound bite, okay. which you'll say okay. say th this is the weekend run club and you're tuned in okay. to Undergroundopolis. Whoever do you want y'all want, want to try. Yeah, do you, you want us to do that right now? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, Mitch, take it away. You got a good radio voice. Okay, what am I saying again? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, this is the weekend run club and you're listening to undergroundopolis i want to get it right all right i'm ready when you are just give me a thumbs up yeah go ahead this is the weekend run club and you're listening to undergroundopolis perfect crushed it <laughs> now the second favor i have a joke of the week segment so i need a corny joke the corniest joke you can think of <laughs> yeah. okay, take it away somebody always Why? has one why was hold on, this? You, 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 hold on. It's the same format. This is Haley from Weekend Run Club, oh, and here's your joke of the week. Yes! This is Haley from the Weekend Run Club, and you're listening to Undergroundopolis, and this is your joke of the week. It's the best one I've got. Um, why was the sand wet, you guys? Why? Because the seaweed. Oh. What? <laughs> oh, you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you guys again, man. But I'll, I'll get, as soon as I get this done, I'll send it to Bridget or uh, to your page or whatever. Guys, please. I'm trying to grow too. So please yes, share the sure. hell out of it. 
All right. You, you know will it. do, man. Yeah. Thanks so much for having us. Right. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Good. Take I thought care. it was fun, man. Yeah. All right. We're signing off. See All right. ya.